and there are two biblical ways to call upon the lord never forget this there are two biblical ways to call upon the lord number one heartfelt prayer number two perfected praise heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer hearts shabakato siata heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer ye have not because ye ask not he says ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full let me show you something mark chapter 11 please give us verse 24 mark 11 24 that there are two dimensions to calling upon god calling upon his mighty power and his outstretched arm therefore i say unto you is that in your bible what things soever ye desire please help me when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them once you have not prayed and you just believe arbitrarily god loves me too much to leave me suffering like this you are right but that is not the modus operandi of the kingdom i hope you realize that god himself submits to his word the bible says he has exalted his word even above his name his reputation so there are no sentiments in dealing with god even jesus himself when he brought himself low and became the son of god he had to call upon god for every time he desired to see his manifest power for instance in john chapter 11 the resurrection of lazarus jesus himself they rolled away the stone and he said my father i thank you because you always hear me he acknowledged the government before him and with that authority that he so vocally expressed i can of my own do nothing by that power he said lazarus come forth and he that was bound came forth and said lose him and let him go are we learning we call upon him in prayer the bible says i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise then he says so shall i be saved the combination of prayer and praise most believers know prayer but we do not know praise praise has nothing to do with whether you can sing or whether you can dance if you are ashamed do it in your room but by all means prayer and praise are mysterious weapons that seem to attract the might of god my bible says he inhabits the praises of his people are we together what does it mean to praise god to praise God means to acknowledge him as touching his might and his power. Whether it's through a dance, whether it's through singing, the most important component of praise is not your dance. You can be dancing and yet not be praising. That acknowledgement is the praise factor. If in your dance and in your praise, because there are many, let me not even go there. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's just continue where let's finish in peace tonight but i can assure you that there are many things that do not carry power because acknowledgement is not in it i can dance for a show and as powerful as that is i am not praising god there your acknowledgement you know what it means to acknowledge to acknowledge means to insist that the person you are acknowledging perceives that you recognize his contribution in your life so what most people call praise beyond the talking drums beyond the instruments beyond the nice melodies praise is from a point of acknowledgement god you did this for me look what my life has become where was i when you took me oh god and that will sponsor your dancing that will sponsor your singing are we together now that will sponsor your rolling on the ground it is not the activity that makes it praise the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all thy heart are we still here it says and lean not unto your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him you can replace that word with praise him to praise means to acknowledge 
I don't know if I've done it in this church, but say I want to introduce someone here, let's say a gentleman here, and let's say someone who has achieved so much, when you acknowledge people, you don't say, how are you? That's not how to acknowledge. Usually, when you get an intelligent MC who wants to introduce someone, they will start something like in 1998 he won a prestigious award of this and that am i right on that they now begin to flaunt his credentials and at the end of it they say ladies and gentlemen we are moving no further until we acknowledge this that is what it means to praise god you cannot praise god without talking about what he has done that you mention the name of your children by name don't say there are too many if there were not too many to be helped by god they shouldn't be too many to be mentioned Lord, I thank you. Look what you did in January. I didn't even know I would survive it. One month ago, I was in the hospital. I watched people die. But look, you kept me. Now you are praising him. I'm showing you how to call upon God. And he says, you did this for me. And you are acknowledging me. And then, when you are not ashamed to do it before men, Come and see a man who told me everything I have done. And they said, you are a prostitute. He said, forget the issue of prostitution. Come. Come. And the people said, this is compelling. Do you know? There are many people's salvation that is tied in your testimony and your praise. You need to be able to acknowledge God so loud that someone asks you, what is the joy for? And then you tell him, my testimony is not a manifestation of pride. I am just too grateful to be silent. Too grateful to be silent. Two of my children graduated with first class. My husband just won a contract. I just had an encounter with Jesus. Five unbelievers in my family gave their lives to Christ. How do you keep quiet like that? You see, the high point in a testimony is what Jesus did. Let me give you a clue. If you are summarizing, if you don't have time and people are testifying, don't just tell them summarize. No, there is a part of the testimony that glorifies God. If that part is missing, it was just discussion or a flaunting of pride. Be lifted high. Be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and worthy. Before we pray, my dear people, I want you to sing me a song. Aribiti Arabata. Go ahead. Aribiti Arabata. Lift your hands, lift your voices in one minute and bless him. son schooling abroad what is there in my son graduating what is there in my husband being a nice man what is there in my wife being a godly woman what is there in all my five children loving the lord when we begin to the bible says bless the lord oh my soul please help me he said and forget not forget not force your memory to remember lord you took me from nothing i came to lagos with no help look what your mercy has done in my life
go ahead in one minute just find a way of blessing him in my life be glorified be glorified Be glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. Please listen to me. Listen to me, everyone. Please let me have your attention. How many of you have found yourself drawn to grateful people that you give someone 5,000 and for one week the person is still sending a text? Mommy, just to say, you say it's too much. You even feel embarrassed. Do you know it's as if you owe them? Their gratitude does something to you. But there are people that you can help and after two weeks, they send you a text and say, sorry, I forgot, just to say thanks most likely they have closed that door by themselves in my work with god there is nothing too small he heals a headache i roll before him lord thank you nobody has the power to add one cubit to a man's hair hallelujah can i tell you men who know how to pray and know how to praise are the ones who do not just experience the wonder of God they become signs and wonders themselves and I want you to believe me I know what I'm saying there is no limit to a man who knows how to pray and knows how to praise I told you praise is beyond dancing no praise is beyond singing the acknowledgement factor must be there Mention the thing he said, count your blessings. The hymn writer says, He said, Name them how many? One by one. The only way you will be surprised is when you name them one by one. One by one. You have the grace start from January. Lord, look what you did. February, they downsized everybody, but while they were going down, I was rising like the ark of Noah, round to Mount Ararat. How can I dare claim the Bible says, except the Lord? My Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord watches over a city. He said, The watchmen watch it, but in vain. Ladies and gentlemen, it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Sometimes I really wish I'm Yoruba so that there are songs that are fired in my spirit but I'm limited. My understanding is not fruitful. The heavens declare your power and royalty. Help me. Lord, you reign. Ancients of days, Lord, you reign. Your glory is established in justice and righteousness. Lord, you reign. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be
there's a part to this song we're still singing we're not done not for what God has done in your life ladies and gentlemen hear me I've shown you a mysterious secret tonight some of you this is how you started with God and you found out you were rising but I hope you did not become too big to roll on the ground I hope you did not become too big that the designer clothes can no longer touch you listen let me tell you sincerely anybody who is too big to pray and too big to praise you will never see the mighty hand of God you, you don't have to roll but I am just telling you these are the secrets they are the mysteries in the kingdom in the next five minutes you can find a comfortable key my apologies don't mind me if you depend on me I'll keep going up and down but in the next five minutes I'd like you to cry before God in gratitude Lord I thank you Lord I thank you Lord I thank you Lord I thank you King of Kings Lord of Lords King of Kings Lord of Lords King of Kings Lord of Lords one more minute mention the names of your children one by one Lord see what you've done in their lives mention the name of your husband your wife your relatives mention the name of your company cry to the God of heaven in gratitude faithful God mighty God faithful God mighty God I acknowledge that this is your hand I acknowledge that this is your finger One more minute I leave you with your maker one more minute I leave you with the one who cried when men failed you the one who showed up for you sickness would have destroyed your destiny I leave you with the one who preserved your life I leave you with the one who protected your company and your business from loss and failure many are there that rise up against me many are there which say where is my help but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I lay me down, and I slept. He said, I wait for the Lord sustain me.
Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. They may not know why we worship. They may not know why we praise. It is from hearts of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you read in your Bible that you enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise? It says to come before him with singing. Now watch this. In one of the years I was here, I taught on the book of Esther, exploring the power of favor. Let me borrow a minute or two and then we'll pray. Listen, do you know that when it was time kings in those days the bible says that ahasuerus was a king over 127 provinces if you were king over that many province you were a great man then he marries this woman called vashti it was customary for kings to flaunt their wealth and their glory are we together now and the zenith of all that display was when they brought their queens so that the people could see the level of the majesty the investment they had made on them now the king sent for Vashti and Vashti refused to come. She forgot that the only reason she was queen was that she married a king and she had her own agenda. And the king being a good man was not rash in making his decisions but the elders came to warn him. He said, this thing this woman has done, if you leave it, it will become a pattern. You see, it's a prophetic message. Now Vashti leaves the palace then a young village girl from a place called Shushan. She hears that they are gathering all the virgins. Perhaps the king may find a wife in one of them. And then Mordecai, her uncle, says, why not try your luck? There's no crime in trying. This young girl, Hadassah, mentored by Haggai, the keeper of the king's women. And she gives him, he gives her a secret. And to cut the long story short, by the time we get to Esther chapter 2 and verse 17, the Bible says the king loved Esther more than all the other women, the other virgins, so that he made her queen. He put a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So she had now become queen. She started hearing that there was a wicked man who the king loved called Haman. Are we together? And that this man was determined to annihilate the Jews. And she was the only person who had the kind of access that would produce a miracle. Else, by definition, they had gotten a date even for that slaughter. Now watch what she did. I'm just saying this to show you a protocol in securing God's attention. There was no doubt in the power of the king. One word from him could put her man and every enemy of God's people down. But how was she going to secure his power to her favor? Because her man was the king's friend. And her man had been there before her arrival. Had she just walked to the king and said, I am your wife, destroy this man. She will follow Vashti too and be on her way out. Because the king, in all of the book of Esther, you see that the king was a noble man. He was a king indeed. Now watch what she does. She declares a fast. And then she fasts herself. Because as in those days, if the king did not invite you into his inner chamber and you found yourself there, the penalty would be death or you will be banished completely from the kingdom. But because she had prayed, the Bible says she went to the king and he looks at her, lifts up the golden censer and says, come, what do I give you? Even up to half of my kingdom that's what happens to men when they are under the influence of favor now watch this the wisdom here is that the woman would have said half of your kingdom okay i take half of the kingdom so that i have some power too but watch what she said king the reason why i am here is because i know you have a need you want to see your glory known i want to prepare a feast for you just to celebrate you and i want in attendance if you allow this man called haman i also want him to be there notice how she approaches the king and the king said this is what i've been looking for and he says go ahead he enjoyed the feast and then he told her do another one again she kept 
doing the feast until she secured his trust then the bible says a certain kind of feast called the feast of wines and when they got to that feast the king said no I, you can't be this kind to me there has to be something bothering you and she said there's something i have to say this man called her man is plotting against my people but you see her benevolence and her lavish show of worship and love had trapped the king he couldn't fight against her and the bible says he went to the garden to reason out what he would do and her man came to beg her you see how god was against him and the king came out and saw the man near his wife and said on top of i'm even thinking of what to do with you and now i come out and i find you i don't care whether you apologizing or not it gave him the boldness to pass that decree that where you wanted to hang mordecai and destroy the jews that is the same place look the book of esther is an interesting book no sword was used but there was death no fighting it was praise honor and victory praise honor and victory that was a prophetic adumbration on how to approach the king when you want him to rise up as a mighty deliverer let the people praise thee O god it says then the earth shall yield her increase then in psalms 149 it says let the high praise of god be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to bind their kings with fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon the nobles the bible says that when you that this is the heritage of the saints Do not just let's not just share the grace and live tonight knowing that we attended a powerful service god has given you a key the wonder walking god is ever willing to arise concerning your life but the key here is that you must know how to use the twin spiritual forces of prayer we have done one with praise can you lend me five or ten more minutes because i want us to pray now that you have secured you have worked in keeping with the protocol of approaching the king the bible says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace is that in your bible yes that you can make petitions you can present your requests with confidence and he said this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will that we know that he hears us what is his will that all men be saved so any prayer about salvation you can be sure it is done what is his will that no inhabitant in zion will say i am sick that means when you pray to rebuke sickness it is godly what is his will i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth is that true yes what is his will that your influence be established genesis 17 and verse 6 it says and i will make you exceeding fruitful is that true and that i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you so influence is god's destiny for you what is his will that the path of the just is as a shining light shining ever brighter even to his perfect what is his will that god is able to make the barren woman to be a joyful mother of children what is his will as for me and my house we will serve the lord so anyone who is part of your house directly or by leadership you can bring them under that prayer cover i'm already giving you prayer points so that when it's time to pray you pray intelligently and with confidence knowing that once your prayer is within the circumference of the will of the father there is a guarantee that you are praying a prayer that will be answered what is his will that you excel the bible says and isaac began to prosper and he prospered and went forward he works great until he was very prosperous and the philistines envied him what is his will that he can cause men and grant them the power to prosper what is his will and i will restore the years that the canker worm so restoration is his will i'm showing you his will so that when you pray you pray intelligently what is his will that he can cause the nations you will call on one man and that a nation can answer you yes sir what is his will 
Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you blessed shall you be in the city blessed shall you be in the country blessed shall be your needing trough it's in the Bible what is his will that when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up yes sir now that you know his will it grants you the boldness to approach the throne of grace knowing that everyone that asketh receiveth are we together so for the next five or ten minutes if you need to find a prayer partner that's all right if you need to walk around that's all right the worship team will just charge the atmosphere while we pray pray in the spirit and make petitions the next 10 minutes is for crying your request don't keep quiet ye have not because he has not foundations of sapphire and the believers that are here gathered and those following online please open your mouth and begin to pray Rakata pata kato skata pata kato, embrante ke baroko tosko.